Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech where we've got some repairs to do here. We took a lot of armor damage and some of these mechs may not be fully good to go. Like for example the blackjack, I'm quite certain it is not. So let's actually address that, shall we? Let's hop in here and let's stop the work on the blackjack and we'll refit that. Some of those other mechs I'm going to leave as is because I don't think they took anywhere near this level of damage. We did lose a small laser and three double heat sinks. That hurts. We only have two double heat sinks here. However, we do have a clan double heat sink kit. We could swap this over to clan double heat sinks. We would have to drop four regular double heat sinks though. And I don't think that's worthwhile. Clan Double Heat Sinks, the only real benefit there is that they take up two slots rather than three. So maybe we slot on the two extra Double Heat Sinks. And beyond that, I'm not sure there's that much we can do, really. We could put that small laser back on. I mean, that's really a terrible backup weapon. We may be better off. Let's just max out that armor. 1.453 tons remaining. Okay. We could ditch this single jump jet. Now that we can control where we actually land, I don't think that's strictly speaking necessary. I would not be necessarily opposed to putting two more double heat sinks onto this if we had them. We absolutely do not. And so for right now, we may want to just say, this is what it's going to be. Maybe toss on a pair of medium lasers as backup weapons that we're not really going to utilize unless things get really awkward. <laughs> not ERs. Definitely not ERs. Not heavy lasers either. Although, medium heavy lasers are funny. That's 26 heat. That's a lot of heat compared to the ERPPC's 45. I am interested in utilizing these medium heavy lasers. That is definitely something I'm interested in. But I think we're just going to use regular medium lasers for right now. So we're going to slot those in and we can't fit one over here. We maybe move this double heat sink over to this arm. That could work. And then that allows us to put the medium laser in over here. Now this thing is not heat efficient. We know this but that's okay for now. It's still going to be more heat efficient than it was last episode. So that's good. Now, I think we're going to tick forward here and let some of this continue. I do want to put the blackjack as the top priority. So let's tick forward a little bit. We're going to have to hit this financial report here, I think. We will definitely get the Argo upgrade. And we will hop into the engineering here. I am interested in grabbing potentially the drive system. That is fairly expensive, and we need to consider we're going to be running pretty tight here. Maybe we just go for training module three. Sure thing. Let's get it done. It'll take a bit, but we'll get it done. Okay. We'll take forward a little bit here again, two days to the financial report. And I want to think about who we want to use those heavy lasers on. Hmm, who's already running super heat efficient and is fast enough to get in behind enemies and backstab them with that? That's what we need to think about, I think. Let's hop into the mech bay for right now. And let's see if any of these are problematic. Nope, we're good so far. Let's tick forward this extra day or two here. Get our pilots back. Okay, the chameleon is now done. Let's once again check to see if it needs any additional work. It does not. However, I think this is a good candidate for heavy lasers. It does run a little bit hot. We can ditch the machine guns. As well as the jump jets. Those are... Hello, stop spinning. Thank you. Those are very not necessary. 
So we ditched that. We have four tons available. Let's ditch... Hmm, I'm just thinking here. I think we should ditch the guys in the... Actually, we should ditch all of this weaponry for right now. We do have two hand actuators. So we could theoretically put in, like, a combat shotgun. But we don't, I think, have the tonnage for that. Yeah, we don't. That's okay. Once again, with mag shots, we don't have ammo for them. I'm very interested in putting in these heavy lasers. Interference with a battle mech sensors means that a heavy medium laser is penalized with a plus one to hit modifier. Okay, that's fine. So we would essentially, they do take three slots. We've got plenty of slots, though. We can put in a medium heavy laser here and here. And we can put in an additional one here. And this is starting to become a ludicrous amount of damage. Already. These output 40 damage. Now, this is very heat inefficient. That is for sure. We can put in another one here. And then we could put in, like, small lasers from here. So we could put in a small laser here, a small laser here. Maybe clan machine guns if we have them. I don't think we do. I think we just have regular machine guns right now. We could potentially still have that on there. Run a machine gun there and there. And then a machine gun ammo. I would like to run like... That's LMG ammo. I don't think that works. We could run half a ton of ammo in each leg. Like this. And then we'd have almost four tons to work with in terms of heat sinks. Now this is running double heat sinks. That isn't helpful. We're going to have to downgrade that to single heat sinks. Which means that our heat efficiency is absolutely in the toilet right now. <laughs> that is expected, unfortunately. So we put in a heat sink here and here. And then one here and one here, for example. And our heat efficiency is still hot garbage. Yeah, I kind of expected this. We may have to go down to just the two heavy lasers. Something like this. And then run additional small lasers. Like, for example, a small laser here and a small laser here. And then use this extra ton for heat sinks. That is better. Not necessarily great, but it is better. We'll put in a heat sink, say, over here. Actually, these should be in the torso, not in the arms. It's slightly safer. I'll put this one in the head. Yeah, we're a little overweight. We do have ferrofibrous armor and endosteel structure. We may want to consider putting in heavy ferro. That is more reserved slots. So this means we only have one slot available. But we're actually doing pretty well on our heat right now. So we put in an additional heat sink, or rather, we're doing pretty well on our weight right now. We put in an additional heat sink there. Our heat sinking is 48 heat. Interesting. I think this works. I do think this works. It means that our melee attack is almost 200 damage. Not bad for a 50 tonner. We'll validate that. Looks great. We'll confirm that. We'll see how that feels. Now, this chameleon here, we could also refit similarly. But I think I'm actually going to refit the hunchy. I want to take a look at this guy. Yeah... I think we drop these two medium lasers, and we upgrade these to heavy lasers. Medium heavy lasers. Yes, this will hurt our heat efficiency. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely no doubt about it. We ditch the two medium laser aggros, and instead perhaps run 52 heat for that. Oh my. <laughs> Perhaps run small lasers in those slots. Something like this. That does give us an additional ton to work with. Now, we don't have any additional double heat sinks to throw in here. 
So I'm interested in moving this double heatsink over to this torso, just to even things out a little bit. We could put in an additional small laser in the head. That's something we could do. We could drop this medium laser and put in one more small laser here. And then we have one ton to work with. Now we could put endo, or rather ferrofibrous armor on this. And then we'd have 2.3 tons to work with. Can we, what's our internal heat sinks available? Two. We can fit two internal heat sinks. We don't have an engine heat sink plus two. Sad. We would have to upgrade our engine, which we don't really have the ability to do. No real FCS to work on there. That is completely fine. I would love to just slot in two additional double heat sinks. We don't have them. That would be an ideal scenario. In that case, we drop the ferrofibrous armor. We have two tons available here. We'll just use medium lasers. Standard medium lasers, not agra. Medium laser here, medium laser here. This is not great for our heat efficiency, but it'll do for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and take forward a little bit more here. We need to let a few more of these repairs finish up. Okay. That's good for now. The Hunchy and the Chameleon will finish up in just two days. So that is wonderful. Let's check this to see if there's anything else here broken. No, it looks reasonable. I'm interested in looking into this guillotine, though. This guillotine is set up more as a medium pulse laser backstab mech, but it doesn't really move fast enough for that. So maybe we should consider upgrading the weaponry here to be slightly different. We'd leave the double heat sinks pretty much as they are. We'd leave the SRM probably. Swap the ERPPC over to this arm. Drop this medium pulse laser. Drop these medium pulse lasers. That gives us seven tons to work with. Maybe we do drop the streak. Put the ERPPC over here. Maybe like a large pulse laser over here. And then just an ER large laser. It's going to run pretty hot, but it already did. What would that actually look like in terms of heat efficiency? That would actually be exactly the same as it currently is. We do lose some power, though, so I think we're just going to discard that. We're just going to leave that as is. We'll revisit that a little bit more later on. We need to take forward two more days here. Job's done, Commander. Excellent. And at this point, we may as well take forward one more day to finish all this, I think. So we'll finish that. Hey boss, Excellent. And we're really low on cash. That is definitely a thing that is happening. We'll go ahead and grab this. And we're going to hop into the store here. We need to make some sales because we need to sell a little bit for drop costs. That said, those get paid after, don't they? They do. They absolutely do. So, we're going to go ahead and grab a point of tactics for a mech warrior. We'll just go through and do these promotions. And yes, we're running mega low on cash right now. That's okay. We will deal with that in just a moment. Duce, okay, Falcon. Falcon mostly pilots the archer. Initiative and tactics rolls. Hmm. I don't feel like either of these are particularly good. Maybe we're better off going for Warlord for those clustering roll modifiers. Do it. Okay. Jinx. Jinx should definitely take Phantom Mech. 100%. That'll keep the harasser a little bit more survivable, assuming we remember to use it. <laughs> Which is a bit of an assumption. Mech okay. Complete. Wonderful. Lord Daki finishing that up. Yes, Commander. And we'll grab Squib a point of tactics. That'll be fine. 
And everybody else is good to go. I do still want to hop into the store here quickly and sell a couple of things because I'm a little bit spooked about whether it deducts the funds first and then it gives you, oh, you're bankrupt. And, yeah, that, that would not be great. So we're just going to get ourselves a little bit of a pad here. I don't think it works that way, but I want to be safe rather than sorry. So we're going to... Actually, we should probably do mech parts, or more specifically, certain vehicle parts that we're extremely unlikely to use. If we hop into the storage here, then we can go into the lights and we can look at things like this copperhead. We're extremely unlikely to use this. We'll scrap that. That is taking a little while. Okay, this cargo truck, we'll scrap. And we'll just go until we have, I don't know, maybe 250k. Hummingbird, yep, get out of here. Excellent. It's definitely a little on the slow side. I was not expecting that. These hunter parts, they scrap for a pretty good amount. We'll just call that good. These are not vehicles that we're really intending to use at all. And that fire truck, yeah, get out of here. We'll take that cash. Wonderful. So now we'll go ahead and deploy. Now that we have a little bit of funds built up. And let's see what we've got available here. Hmm. We Ooh, this is a lot of money. Not much salvage. This is more money. This is... This is a ludicrous amount of cash. So it's this one. I feel like we should go for this one, though. These are a bit risky. They're five skill... And this is a lot of money, so I suspect we're going to be against some pretty advanced forces. This one, less so. So let's go ahead and grab this one. I don't think we want this priority salvage. In fact, we could bump our salvage down without losing a priority salvage here and grab ourselves an extra 300k. We'll do that. Okay, now all of this should be exactly default. This is how we want to deploy. Yes. This all looks good. Let's go. So we are going to be running a little bit hotter on our hunchback and our... Oh, I'm a moron. I wanted to bring this guillotine. Oh, well. That guillotine is really kind of an upgrade to the blackjack. I don't even know if we have the tonnage available to do that right now, though. I would have had to check that, but it's too late now. So we're going to deploy with the blackjack, and I'll try to remember to swap that out. That'll be a good thing to do, for sure. I definitely should have tried that. If we have the tonnage, that's something that we want to do in the future, for sure. For now, though, hopefully this will be relatively quick. We need to destroy the invading lance. We've detected an inbound dropship belonging to the local pirate organization. Our local defense forces in the expected drop area are ill-equipped to handle a lance of mechs, but with your aid, we can ensure that the raid does minimal damage. We'd like you to intercept the pirate lance and destroy it. Commander, the pirates wouldn't send a dropship if they didn't mean business. So if we take this job, we should stay alert down there. Indeed. Command interface initiated. Hmm. This is interesting. No allies. Okay. This is an awkward drop point for us, to be sure. Possible enemies dropping over here as reinforcements. Possible up... Ah, that's at map edge, actually. This would be a really weird place for us to drop. I'm going to stick to this and... I don't like that location. Okay. Better. Chameleon dropping here is potentially problematic. Jagger here is definitely problematic. Hmm. This is a road leading up over here. We could absolutely drop down here. This is fine. I don't think we'll have issues with our hovercraft making it up here. All right, mate. Time to earn our money. Okay, so let's see what we are okay. up against. Let's do this. 
We see literally nothing at this point. This is interesting. There we go. Now it seems to have caught up. So we're going to move the guillotine up to here and see if we can find anything. Not much. Okay. We're just going to close in as much as we can for right now. On the move. This is a heavy laser chameleon here. On it. This is the non-heavy laser chameleon. I read you, Commander. Moving Centurion out. can move in as well. The blackjack, which really should be upgraded. The Nidhog will move up here. Confirmed. And yeah, I figured we'd get some eyes on there. I'm a little surprised the frame rate is kind of struggling right now, but uh, okay. That's fine. The Jaeger will move on up over to here, and we'll see on what we can way. see. The Maxim will join us. On my way. As will the Harasser. Okay, so we do see that there are some enemies up here. For sure. Entering combat. Okay, that's a Tarantula hover tank. Interesting. So we see that that's a Boar's Head Atlas. Okay, that's a bit spooky. We see that this is a ferret. That's not a big deal. Or a Drillson. Okay. It is this chameleon's turn. I would not mind positioning the chameleon here. Yes, we're going to have a malice to our firing odds here, but that's okay. Just firing the medium heavy lasers does build heat. A single medium heavy laser drops the heat. Okay, I'm not going to fire the machine guns here to build up slightly less heat and to save ammo. Firing on target. Okay. I'm not surprised that those missed. More of a pot shot than anything else. I do think that there are more enemies than what we see here. There's at least one more lance that's going to drop in. Rude! Stray shotting our centurion there. Let's see where the boar's head decided. That wasn't even the boar's head. That was a ferret. Very rude. We'll see where it is, pilots, too. Oh, that's an interesting place to go. Well, that's fine. We'll move up with this chameleon, and we'll position it right up over here. It is potentially in danger from the Atlas, and that is not great hit odds. I guess we'll fire on the Atlas here, but these... I mean, firing on the front arc of an Atlas is to some degree a fool's errand. And we missed everything to boot. Okay. That's fine. Next up, that'll be the Drillson here. He'll probably move over here and attack one of these guys in the front. Oh, actually, he's going for that chameleon. Okay. We'll accept that. Now, I don't think that we can get our Nidhogg anywhere tremendously good here. Drillson also positioning here. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, we can come in behind the Atlas, for sure. I'm going to go ahead and Phantom Mech here. And we're going to go here for the extra evasive bit. No and we're going to stop behind this Atlas, soften up his rear arc a tiny bit, as well as give him a little bit of heat, but this isn't going to do much. Affirmative. Okay, we'll take that. Now, the Nidhogg... I'm thinking about reserving. I'm strongly thinking about reserving the Nidhogg here. The Drillson, we don't actually see any evasive pips. I think it has evasive pips. But yeah, let's reserve the Nidhogg for right now. Because I want to get our vehicles out of here. Yep. The guillotine can happily park itself up here. Heading out. I would not mind firing on that tarantula. Do we fire the bolt-ons here? Maybe. It's a lot of chem lasers. Acknowledge. Not great hits on those bolt-ons, but that's okay. Short-range missiles are out. Just looking at getting that quick damage Good boost. 
The Hunchy, with its medium heavy lasers, is going to move up over here, I think. Actually, we have better chances over here, I think. We'll hit this tarantula in its side arc. There is a possibility that we kill it here, but we hit this guy almost entirely in its front previously. Target acquired. And we missed almost everything there. Okay. That's fine. Aye, aye. The Jaeger will absolutely step up to here. We don't have LOS on the boar's head. This will likely kill the tarantula or backstab the hunchy, which would not make me happy. Okay, the tarantula is dead. That's what we were looking for out of that one. Phase 17, the boar's head moves. Now is when we probably regret our life choices. Um... So he just face planted into a cliff and didn't fire and turned his back to us. A bold strategy. Yeah. That is definitely one of the bolder strategies that I've seen. So we can position our blackjack up here and I'm going to do so. And I want to fire 27.5. I'll fire at the drill sin, but I'm not happy about it. Yeah, I don't want to fire these medium lasers, I don't think. I'm taking the shot. <laughs> yeah. As I said, I'm not happy about it. Hitting our harasser right there. The Centurion is going to position over here, but actually I'm going to reserve the Centurion as well. Waiting for the, right play. the harasser is, I think, going to move up here and help soften up the Atlas's rear arc. I should have maybe stepped back a little bit further than this. Mm, maybe not, actually. Light him up. Only two hits, sir. That'll do, though. Okay. The archer. We're definitely going to continue to hit the atlas. This is side arc on it, and it's not ideal, but it'll do. Yeah, decent damage there. We'll take that. Now, the Maxim is obviously coming up here to backstab the boy's head. Full speed, no and because I moved into melee range there, which I did deliberately choose to do, that means that we are committed to what the Nidhogg does here. 60%, huh? Oh, that... Uh, that machine gun fired for a while. Okay, so the Nidhogg, its mission is definitely, at this point, to come in over here. Position confirmed. And it has to fire at this Drillson. We're going to hope to not do too much to our mech there. But let's go. Okay, we didn't do anything to it. Good. So, our mediums are now committed to attacking these guys over here. We're going to make sure that we drop our sniper artillery on the Drillson. We're going to hope that we don't miss it. Oh, that was actually a head hit? Oof. All right. Okay, we did hit the chameleon a little bit there, but that wasn't bad. We'll take that. Now, I'm assuming there's going to be allies here for them dropping in pretty soon. Surely that's going to be the case. The ferret and the drillson are going to move here. It's going to be the drillson first. And we'll see what it decides to do. Maybe backstab this chameleon. I was thinking about it. Guillotine? Fine. Go for that all you want. That is 100% A-OK -okay by me. And now the Drillson is, of course, going to Ace Pilot, and we'll see where it goes. Hopefully, it won't have too many evasive pips. That's what we're looking for here right now. Boy, it's considering a lot of locations if it's taking it this long. It didn't move at all? 
Okay. Commander. So that happened. We're going to come in here. We're going to melee attack this guy. With everything we've got. Right in its rear arc. Affirmative. Putting my weight into it. It's, it's quite dead. Structure exposure there. We didn't kill it there. But that's okay. This is in its... Uh, what torso is this? This is the left. Okay, so that's on this side. By. Our Nidhogg is at this point going to come around over here. On it. And we are going to drop bombs on this ferret. Yeah, we'll probably splash damage the chameleon a little, but I'm okay with that. Okay, not too bad. We did some damage there. Yes, boss. At this point, our Hunchy will step down over here. And we're going to fire on the Drillson. We can't fire all of this, obviously. This is way more heat than we can handle right now. I think we'll avoid firing the heavy lasers this round. And there we go. It's dead. Wonderful. I'm still assuming there's another Lance. Phase 19, the ferret will move. Or maybe not, seeing as what happened to the Drillson. Let's see what it decides to do here. It's certainly taking its time. There's no doubt about that. PPC on the guillotine? Okay. That is not tremendously relevant, especially since it missed. And now it's thinking about its movement. Does it decide to move? It's still pretty fresh. Phase 19, phase 16. Okay. So it actually moved up over there. I don't necessarily blame it for that. The Jaeger will remain exactly where it is and fire into the side arc of this boar's head. Did we hit that? I don't think we did. That's okay. We did not need to. Yep. The blackjack will move up to here. I'll do what I can. And we will also fire on the boar's head. Probably only the one ERPPC here. Copy that. That's a hit. Boom. The side arc, not feeling so good. We're going to close in with this chameleon. Ooh, that's rear arc on the boar's head. Got it. Max speed, no shooting. We take this. Yeah, we may stray shot our friend there, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. No Ooh, that was actually really good. Waiting for orders. Your orders are actually to come up here and deal with this ferret. Never mind, that's a lot of evasive pips. Your orders are to come over here Moving out. and kill this boar's head. I don't think we'll actually kill it, but we'll give it something to think about for sure. 60 damage there. Okay, we'll take that. 51 heat as well. Yes, Commander. The archer, I would love to get the archer into direct LOS, and we actually just can squeak that out. Do it. Acknowledge. Nice. Okay, this guy moves now. The boar's head does. He's already overheated. He moves, I think, through the fire there. Okay, he took out the harasser. That's fine. The harasser is entirely expendable. He would have been far better off to go for the maxim there. Like, I don't care about that. What do you need? That is 100% fine by me. Uh, we'll go ahead and sprint to here, I suppose, with the guillotine, and we'll pot shot this ferret, but we have very, very low odds of actually hitting it. Okay, I'm on it. Yeah, I didn't think we would. Oh, That's fine. Pissed. We're still working on closing in here. The J. Edgar, let's see, we do have multiple rear arc attack spots on the boar's head. We're going to position the J. Edgar here. And 
how many evasive pips does he have? He has one. Okay. Maybe we get him shut down here with that heat. Not quite. That's fine. We will move the Maxim back behind him. All of this is flames on the way, so the Maxim is going to have to take some amount of flame damage. That's okay. Light him up. This could kill the Atlas. And it did. Wonderful. So all that's left is that vehicle now. And the Centurion will go ahead and drop a sniper artillery on it. Is there any point in doing direct fire on this guy? I don't think so. I think we're going to run in indirect mode. Okay, we still missed. I'm not shocked by this. Okay. Now our Blackjack is going to position right about here. Nice unobstructed LOS, and these are some truly awful hit odds. <laughs> that is for sure. Okay, I'm not shocked by that. Yeah, I'm really not shocked by that. Okay, our guillotine will step up, and this is a fine position. Once again, we'll pot shot the ferret. I don't think there's a point in heating ourselves up with all the medium pulses. Roger. Yeah. That is completely fine. I missed. Yeah, you are pretty much always going to. Receiving you. The Jaeger is actually in position to pot shot this guy as well. How's our LOS looking? Reasonable. We actually got a hit in there. Shocking. Okay. Stand I'll take by. it. The chameleon is going to sprint in over here. However, our heat is pretty high up there. And we're just going to sink heat. Okay, we'll see what this guy decides to do now. He's the only enemy left. I'm beginning to think there won't be another Lance, but surely there will be. This was too easy. And yeah, we did lose the harasser, but we don't care. That's completely fine. It doesn't hurt us in the slightest to lose the harasser. The ferret moves over to the mineral field there. Got a head hit on the chameleon. Okay. It's not too bad. Wait, did you just fall off of a building, Nidhogg? That, that's a little weird for a VTOL to do, but okay. Uh, we can move up with this chameleon into front arc, I suppose. Our hit odds are still going to be pretty bad at this range. And yeah, we didn't hit anything. That's fine. Next up. How's it going? This hunchy. Uh, this hunchy's not going to really do anything. We can't get into LOS. We'll just close in. Next up. The Nidhogg. The Nidhogg absolutely can do something. And we're going to get, I guess, into side arc. I was hoping for rear, but side will be okay. We did breach the armor there. Or was that a turret hit? That was a turret hit. Never mind. We did not breach the armor there. We're going to position out of the mineral field, actually. For the slightly better hit odds here. 27.5. Sure. I don't think we hit any of that. Yeah, we did not. That's okay. We just need to finish chasing down this ferret and it'll all be done. Yeah, we can position the archer here. That's completely fine. Pretty good Artemis hit odds, actually. Good armor reduction. We'll take that. I'm here. I don't well, actually, we just have vehicles up here. That's fine then. Okay, we hit the chameleon a little bit, but it's fine. I'm taking a pounding, Commander. You're okay. You're completely okay. We hit the ferret, which was what was important. The Maxim will absolutely close in to rear arc here. 
On my way, double time. And we're going to be using not standard ammo, but inferno ammo here. Okay, we started a few fires. That's always great. The chameleon will close in here, and I think we just melee this guy in front arc. Actually, technically, we'd be slightly better off to hit his right-hand side, which would be over here. In kick mode. There we go. 54% on the melee. We'll see what everything else gets to. Okay, we didn't hit the melee attack. We hit a few of those, but not much. Is this guy running ECM or something? Why are we having such a hard time hitting it? Let's take a look here. I know it's in a mineral field. And he did move. No sensors. He might be running ECM, and we don't, I think, have counter ECM. Uh, can we switch this to passive? This guy does have ECM, but I don't think it's switchable. Engaging with talk. Probably shouldn't have fired the bombs in retrospect, but it worked. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Well, the chameleon took more damage from us than from anything else. <laughs> it was only the one lance. I'm actually surprised. Well, we're not going to get that full boar's head atlas, that's for sure. Let's see what we get here. Well... Is it just me, or is the game running substantially slower since that latest patch? Uh, 1.1.2.2. Well, we'll see. It might be. So yeah, I mean, we took some, uh, took some armor damage here. But should be completely fine for Yang to repair. We do get one single Atlas part, and I think we'll take that as our priority salvage. There isn't really anything tremendously good in here. Yeah. Okay, we got a laser AMS. We'll sell that. And a basic cockpit. We'll sell that too. An engine core 170. No thanks. Deadfire SRM ammo. I do like that. We'll continue from there. So the real question is, just how much is it going to cost us to repair? I mean, it'll cost us like 8,000 or so to repair the harasser. And then beyond that, we did take a little bit of armor damage here and there. A tiny amount of internal damage on the Centurion's head it was unfortunate. But overall, I expect this to weigh in at under 40k. So I think that was a very, very... Very profitable mission. Let's see what we've got. Hopefully Yang will give us some good news here. 17k. That's really solid. Do it, Yang. Three days for the repairs? In theory, anyway. Yeah, that's going to be three days for the repairs. Fair enough. Actually, no. That's going to be two days for the repairs. <laughs> okay, that's great. At any rate, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to go get ourselves some more money. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.